Ever been on a blind date? I'm kind of on the camping equivalent. Going on a pretty long 200 plus kilometer up to two week trip with someone I just met last night. Know him from social media a little bit, but we've never actually hung out in person until, until last night. So kind of a wild card. It's a long time to spend with someone you, you just met and uh, probably gonna be a bit of a lack of personal space. At least we have different canoes, but yeah, I think we'll be stepping on each other's toes a little bit. Oh, sorry, buddy. Didn't see you there. As rod tip was dipping there, I thought I might just be snagging bottom, but off to a good start. Early fish here. Feels like a little bit of weight, not too much, but walleye and pike trip. What do we got? Almost here. Walleye? Oh no. Whoa. Piker. Wow. Little pike to start off. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. dramatic skies to start here. Could be some foreshadowing for this trip. The weather forecast looks pretty challenging, most of all the wind. Really excited for it. We could see a lot of big mammals on this trip. There's possibility for bear, lynx, moose, timber wolves, big wolves, and uh, caribou, woodland caribou. There's a pretty good population of them here. Probably the best chance I'll have to see one this year or for quite a long time, so. That would be magical. Never seen one. It's really high on my bucket list. <laughs> nice. So this pike took it in the eye, the hook, so it, that means it's a keeper. So we're starting off with some fresh meat. Yeah, I think we're camping here. Just come up to this little island just saw lightning over there. So we're gonna haul out camp here. It's um, pretty bushy, but I think we'll be getting a lot of that on this trip, which is cool. I love a nice sight like that. And just a, an incredibly dramatic sky. Stuff going on everywhere. Yeah, I think this is as good as any. I mean, like, it's not exactly the flattest spot. No. Nice erratic. I yeah, like really, it. Very cool. Pretty sweet. My kind of campsite. It's rain on the breeze. We got tarps up. Lickety split. Wind's picking up. Hopefully we can get a chance to cook this fish. Hoping that this passes. So it's fire after it. So pike have a Y bone, and if you clean them like a regular fish, they'll be really bony. So one popular method is the five fillet method, where first you take off the back strap. So just cut in right behind the head on top, down until you hit the spine, and then just follow the top of the spine without cutting into it, otherwise you have lots of bones. Again, that's just the swim bladder burping air out. It's not the fish is dead, that's trying to say something? for sure. <laughs> no. And then you see these bones here? See yeah. this line of bones? Yeah. So unfortunately you have to cut on the outside. And then that meat in here, you could use it for like a, a soup or something, but uh, yeah, for a filet it just doesn't work unfortunately. So, and then you just follow that down. And there are a lot of people out there who are a lot better, a lot faster at this than me, but anyway, that's the gist of it. Filets, this one's long because it's got the belly meat. It looks rough, but that's because cut the uh, pectoral fins or uh, pelvic fins out around it. And yeah, it's had a nice size looking lake herring or something in it. Good forage fish that'll grow big fat pike, but we don't want it. Yeah. Oh, those look great. Chunk it up. It's just easy, a lot easier in the pan to flip, to work with, fit everything in. Oh, what a way to start a trip. Right on. <laughs> Mmm, that's delicious, dude.
6 a.m. It's getting bright out. Surprisingly early. We're gonna get at her. Gotta put in a big day today. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was a short day, probably our easiest day of the whole trip. And yeah, we are way up north. I'll show you on my phone here. Way up north. I didn't really have time to explain yesterday with the fish cleaning and everything. It was dark before we knew it. But yeah, we are we're in for a good trip. So I think we're a little distracted this morning. First morning we're excited. Xander burnt his oats. I uh, burnt my garlic bread and it is destroyed from being smoked into my bag as well. But I've got chili, cheesy chili, and that looks not burnt. Leaving camp number one behind, it was a really nice one. Great view, sunrise this morning, sunset last night. And we are trying to put in a big day today. We've got a good travel day. It was a chilly night, but it's warming up quickly with the sun. And if we don't put a dent in Minnis Lake today, which is our first huge lake, then we could end up windbound for two days with some upcoming wind. So we just want to get a good start, put a good dent in that, and then if we can get at least halfway across Minnis, then we should be able to carry on the following day. Coming up to our first portage of the trip, it's 750 meters. Looks like there's a beer can marking it here, and it looks like the trail curls, but it should be an easy one. It's supposed to be wide, it might be a little wet, but yeah, into our next lake. Oh, it's good to see. Food barrel's heavy right now. A lot of food in there, so. Thank you. Fish on. Oh, this first walleye of the trip. Oh, wonderful. Really nice keeper, but hooks out. There'll be plenty more, so I'm gonna let this one go. We wanna cover some distance, and we just had breakfast not long ago, so. Wet my hands. A little walleye gold. Woo, beauty. Thanks, buddy. This lake doesn't have a name on my topo map, but it is just beautiful. Hard to rush through, but we have so much to see on this, on this trip, and there'll be plenty more to enjoy, so it's okay. Just soaking up the, uh, the moment. This portage is so short that we just took our packs over and now we're double teaming the canoe, one man on each end. So we don't have to unload all the little bits and pieces. We're into Dillasep Lake now, which is a pretty sizable one. We are going into a headwind, but it's manageable today, so it's no problem. It's the days ahead especially tomorrow and the day after, I believe, where the wind could be really challenging. So we're gonna get as far as we can today. Anything? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, okay, good. Just left Dillasep Lake behind on the Dillasep River here, connecting to Minnis Lake. We had a tailwind there, mercifully, Shoulders are really feeling it. These big lakes, the winds can, can just be intense. So we're grateful for the tailwind. We'll ride it for as long as we can and hopefully get well into Menace Lake. Beautiful in here. What do your elf eyes see? Boreal forest. Any hobbits? Have you seen two hobbits? So we just came up through the river here and we're in this part of uh, Menace Lake now. And we were hoping to get over here, at least, and then not be in too much of the headwind on Minnis Lake here, which is quite large. But we're thinking this is more realistic at this point. There we go. Like, Alright buddy, may you live a long and wonderful life. <laughs> that was beautiful, man. Turned into the headwind on Minnis Lake now. Quite a bit tougher paddling, but hopefully just a few more kilometers to go before we make camp. Found camp for the night. Had a pretty long day. 
about nine hours of actual paddling. We're hungry. Stop. We didn't put much of a dent in Minnis, unfortunately, but we'll figure it out. Or we won't. Or we won't. Two possibilities. needed. <laughs> Isn't that going to be way less cooked? We winging it now. What? No, it, I don't, I didn't add like according to instructions or anything. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel, I think there's too much water. But hadn't the other cornmeal been boiling for like 10 minutes? You know what, John? Shut it, John. Just shut it. <laughs> you're probably, you're absolutely right, but. <laughs> Night two of camping with a stranger. So far so good. Put in at least 30 clicks today. A lot of that into a headwind. Over nine hours of paddling. So we're both pretty beat. It wasn't a massive day, but uh, it was plenty. So super excited to be in the hammock. Looking forward to tomorrow. It uh, could be a nasty day, but we'll just have to see. Stormed overnight a bit. Wind was really gusting and there's some lightning, thunder. It's nice to get it overnight. And surprisingly, we might actually get conditions to carry on this morning right away, which is awesome. And alone when they eat a, eat a squirrel and they show like the calories, it's, it's like so sad. <laughs> I'm having a traditional breakfast of burritos and I brought in one avocado as a treat. Want to get some of that? And Xander has oats. Trade you. Damn. <laughs> in fairness, Xander does have a bucket of coffee though, so uh, he's got that on me. Been ready for the day. Yeah, you're gonna be wired. <laughs> Hefty. Two for you, one for me. <laughs> All right, we're leaving our camp behind here, and the wind is is up, but uh, not to the point where we're windbound. We can definitely fight through it like we did yesterday. See how far we get. After Minnis Lake, we got rapids too, so we're excited to get into that, and that would be a great place to be for some windy conditions. Off the big lakes, the wind is still building. But so far it seems like we lucked out and the worst of it came overnight. Still making progress, but we're about to hit the most exposed part of Minnis Lake. pretty well here. We camped last night. We've made it all the way across to this island. Now we're in here and we should be in the clear to get into these rapids. Fish on. Oh! <laughs> oh walleye. Thanks buddy. Nice we're finally out of the wind. I feel like we've been in the wind for so much of the trip. I'm able to fish a bit more now. Just got that one on a husky jerk and up until now. Yeah, that, that was a big bird. I guess an eagle. Yeah, up, up until now I've mostly been using a perch pattern shadow wrap, but yeah, just trolling mostly so far, but we've got these rapids upcoming and we'll be casting those. One more big blow. Oh, that's smoke yeah, out of there. Non calzones for lunch. 
cheesy rehydrated veggies, onion, mushroom, spinach, tomato. Mm. Another fish on. Another walleye, I'm guessing. Yeah, a bit nicer one. Oh. oh, he just pooped on my net. See that yellow stuff there? That's not what I mean by walleye gold. So the walleye. Almost at the end of Minnis Lake, and you can hear the rapids looming ahead. Kind of exciting. Hope we can run it. Kind of gets your nerves going too. Something meteor on here. Oh, uh, nope. Just a pike. Nothing, nothing special. No, a pike. Not bad, it felt bigger. How's it look? From what I can see so far, pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah, but I can't see past these branches, so we have to go a little. Okay. Avoid this rock in that hole there, right? But right. like straight up the middle. Yeah. This rapid looks like it should be no real trouble but we have probably at least two more after it today and it could rain. So I brought this thing out, might as well use it. Should be an eventful, he's all good down there. But it always gets the heart racing. Keeper? Another. Good keeper? One. How big is it? Pretty big. Yeah, that looks perfect. This one hit immediately. As soon as the lure landed. Oh, nets inside out. Almost botched it. This is a keeper too. Oh, and then the hook just came out. <laughs> yeah, got it. We got dinner, buddy. A bit smaller, but to combine they'll be great. And I put a rock in the boat just so I can bonk it, put it out of its misery immediately. Thank you. Coming up to rapid number two, we're using Brad's map here, Brad Jennings, on our phones too. And he said that this one has a sweeper midway, a tree going out horizontally over the river so um, gotta watch out for those it can be very dangerous when currents pulling you into them so we'll have to scout it first as usual but hopefully we can run it after the first one went, which went so smoothly and it's amazing how fast rapids will humble you but it's all good worked out fine it was low consequence and we're on to the next one Brad said there's this sweeper that they had to line around last time they were here so we're just gonna eddy out and have a look yeah there's a nasty strainer here the flow is pushing right under it 
So we're just gonna wait around this one. It's such a short run, it's not worth trying to do something silly. Nice to have the dry suit here. Just saw a bolt of lightning over there over my shoulder. Oh, baby! Walleye, dinner, and a thunderstorm. Sounds great. We better get to camp though. Oh, I love thunder. Are you still thinking camp here? Yeah. That could be the site there. Is that a fire pit? What do you think? Check it out. Thunder booming. We got a pretty nice spot here though. I really like it. Love these ancient looking spruce forests. Bit of use, but it seems quite old. You can see these little rounds here. The moss is absorbing them. Beautiful spot. Let's see if I can get any cheeks off this little guy. Cheek meat. Can you cut off his pectin? Uh, pectoral fins, yeah. Up front, after. I find is easiest. Chunk it up for the pan. How you doing here? Good man, yeah I know it cut up well. Good. We did it. Yeah, hopefully we got a break in the rain to eat. I guess we can use the tarp. Yeah, we'll but... just get that fire up to critical state and <laughs> get it ripped and roaring and we'll be good to go. Great little storm there. We've got some tarps up. Rainbow, thunder, lightning, heavy showers, and now it's time for fish. Hopefully rain holds off for us. Xander got us a delightful fire going. Feels wonderful. We're pretty soaked. I mean, I'm not with the dry suit, but my head is, hands and all that. And it still feels just as good as if I was soaked. Like you are. A little wet. What's up? This is you looking up at me while you're blowing that. <laughs> Are you slicing up your walleye smaller or just leaving them big? Yeah, I chunked it up. Okay. Mind if I go ahead? And eat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mind. Okay. Looks like the rain's just starting back up. We just got time to clean our fish. And first bite. Hot. Mmm. <laughs> oh, it's good. So that walleye was terrific, but we need a little more. Xander's doing some of his uh, dehydrated lasagna. I'm just gonna top my meal off with some instant potatoes. 
Rain's back yet again. Threw some uh, green onion, sriracha, and cheese in there. It's pretty good, actually. Just getting into the hammock. Got fresh clothes on, all dry and warm. It feels so good after a cool and rainy day, windy, but a beautiful one. Ended it with walleye, rainbow. It's a great day. Absolutely can't believe that just happened. Day four, about a third of the way into our trip. I thought that might not happen at all. I thought the odds were against us actually. I've been waiting on a caribou for years, woodland caribou. How do you feel? That's great, I didn't think that was gonna happen. And you've never seen one? I've never seen one before. Oh my goodness. Good eye across the lake right there. Oh, it seemed like he was coming for us or or she. I think uh female caribou. Oh maybe those uh tundra. Tundra caribou grow antlers. I'm not sure about woodland caribou. But wow. It's a good omen. Wow. Oh I'm so happy. Doing rotini this morning. With some parmesan, oh, lots of parmesan. Good job. <laughs> We're on our way with a powerful tailwind, which we'll only be able to enjoy for a little bit while we hopefully run a couple of rapids here. There are three, I think probably two of them will hopefully be able to run. And then after that, we're turning up into the St. Raphael River, which will be upstream travel into this wind, and then Churchill Lake, which is a giant, and we might be windbound there, but we'll see. When the forecast is so variable right now, we're just rolling with it hour by hour. We've got the caribou, nothing else matters. I'm just overjoyed. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's 
really just incredible up here. There's such a vibe. And just ahead here, at some point in the not too distant past, there must have been some serious wind, like maybe microburst, because all the trees are like bending over. A lot of blow down here. The damage to these woods goes on for quite a ways. We're thinking maybe a tornado occurred at some point many years ago. Pretty amazing to see powerful weather up here. <laughs> what do you think? Pretty straight forward. Sweet. Yeah, like straight up the middle, straight up the middle. Yep. Yeah. Looks good. I mean, if you have to, you can kind of eddy out over here, but like, yeah. I'm just gonna... Yeah, okay. no. Straight forward. I realized yesterday I completely forgot to run the rapids on my knees. Just got caught up in the moment. Very easy run, that's nice. Yeah! I guess like obviously stay left. Yeah. I'm not gonna ride the wave train. I'm gonna try to, oh, well watch out for that if you walk down. Yeah, there are a couple obstacles, but. It's up the middle, really. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Two really nice runs, pretty straightforward. Using this transparent, sparkly paddle tail. Oh! Fish on! Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That's a big boy! Woo! It's a good sized pike. Oh yeah. Where you going, buddy? Oh. <laughs> oh, I hope I got that on camera because that thing was enormous. The camera turned. Hopefully, I got it. But that was my biggest pike. That was nice. I was uh. That was probably seven, seven plus pounds. Yeah. Hopefully, I got it that. Looked like it from afar. Sweet. Nice fish, man. Yeah, I didn't want to grab him again because, like, I didn't want to hurt him. Hook came out in the net. Yeah. No, I took it out. Oh, okay. Sweet. Hopefully, I got nice, that. Man. Ah, he splashed me lens. Not as big as yours. Thanks, buddy. We've been enjoying this tailwind so far today as we headed north. We're now turning 
and we're going into it. So we'll see how far we get. It's really picking up. Coming up to rapid number three. Yeah, it's pretty low consequence. We're just gonna rush through it. Look at the wind on the trees here. I can make the rapids a little tougher too. The wind is really blowing us around in here. I can't even wear my hat. It's hard to steer. Xander's got a Royal X boat. Mine's uh, tough stuff, so I have to be a little more careful with rocks, but this looks pretty good. Nice and slow. Also, the wind is slowing me down immensely. <laughs> it's like equaling the power of the rapid. <laughs> you can barely move forward in this wind. Down to you, but first part, you mm -hmm. want some cat tail? <laughs> this stuff burns really awkwardly. I know. Yeah. It's like it raved about as a fire starter, but I'm not a big fan. I guess it no. maybe takes a spark off. Oh, sorry. Why did you put that out? I did. I'm so sorry. I think I put it out. <laughs> no, I think it was me. I'm pretty yeah, sure. you're right. It was you. <laughs> okay. So we're having some lunch here, but it seems like we might be windbound. We have to make a little bush camp here. But it's kind of a unique spot, so that'd be all right. We're just stashing some birch bark. There was a good supply here, so we're boarding it for the future. Some tough weather ahead. It's starting to rain right now, actually. So I'm gonna put down this mangled garlic bread and chili right away. Can't have that getting soggy in the rain. It's already pretty ugly, but it tastes good. Finished lunch and it's about 1.30 now. And we're gonna move on. This site's not great because these grasses, if it rains, walking through them is going to soak us. So, I'm going to see what we can do. As soon as I get around this point, it's going to be wicked. I also put around 30 pounds of rocks up in the front at the bow, just to keep the, the canoe from getting blown around too much in the wind. I can already feel the improvement in my tracking. Got a pretty unique spot here. Good tent pad for Xander. Just just a bush site here, so we're glad we found a flat spot for him. I'll be hanging in here. Beautiful view here down the river. St. Raphael River. Yeah, we're pretty thrilled with this campsite. Good tent pad for Xander. And a beautiful spot for me here. Natural guy out points for all the guy lines. Love it. Mossy. All these interesting mushrooms around. Wind raging on the other side of this point. Nice and leeward here. Ah, feels good. So we got to a point where it just wasn't worth battling the wind anymore. We would have fought tooth and nail to make a couple more kilometers today. This worked out to be a pretty sweet camp. We were just Casting offshore, hoping to get a fish to clean up, but no such luck. Just gonna make some tea, sit by the fire, have some much needed downtime on this trip. It's pretty much been go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, it has. It's nice to take a break. Yeah, it is. So, Xander's got this pretty cool tent here Z Pax Duplex, it's called. I believe it's made of Dyneema, ultra light, one of the lightest tents on the market, if not the lightest. And you can set it up with trekking poles. 
in this style, this fashion here. These aren't trekking poles, but it'd be the same idea. Or these poles can make a, a freestanding uh, structure for it on the outside. So pretty neat. He says it's adequately long. He's also about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, so um, if it's long enough for him, that's saying something. Usually tents are not long enough for me, so uh, pretty good design. Very cool. Making some spruce tea here. Just boil the water. And now I'll put these spruce tips, which are already rinsed in the lake, just to try and get bugs out and whatnot. Just steep them for 15 minutes. And got a delicious tea full of vitamin C. Xander's got his solar panel going. It's pumping in 0.3 watts right now and uh, amps. That's why I don't bring a, a solar panel personally. I think it's for chumps. <laughs> no, it's it, it can be great if there's a lot of sun and you have a time to set it up in, the, in a convenient place, but like if it's raining, if it's cloudy, if you're getting in and out of the canoe, I find it's a hassle. You, you tell me. I've got eight backup batteries with all my cell or my camera batteries, so I needed something that could charge my batteries because I film a lot, a lot. And then I cut it down to like that. Keep that and like a little bit. So we're testing out this beautiful new display from Amazon. Let's hope it doesn't <laughs> crap out in a day or two. GT's coming up. Oh my, swing and a miss. Look at that, it looks like pee pee. Appetite. Flavorful. <laughs> Thanks for the pee pee water. <laughs> You're welcome. It does look like pee pee. It does. Does it smell or taste like pee pee? That's a good guess. <laughs> the best you've ever had. Mmm, that is good. Is that just spruce? Just spruce. Simple pleasure. Hot drink, chilly day. This is a very nice afternoon. I'm almost glad that we were forced to stop. I'm gonna go paddle in a sec and see if we can get a fish. Couldn't get one from shore, but I really want one. And we have we gotta ration our food, you know, especially if this trip went long and we got windbound or got really cold or rainy. Like it's just nice to have that security and have ample food. We do, but Ample, ample food. We need a tailwind someday. We've got some huge lakes coming up, and the tailwind would go a long way. Tea was delicious. Good. We're gonna cook up dinner in a sec, unless we can get a, a fish or two. That would be ideal. And you just set on the water, and a rainbow popped up. Good omen, hopefully. <laughs> Fish on! <laughs> no! Lost it. Oh, it's still, still there. We got this paddle tail on, and sometimes they short bite it. That's the problem with it. Great lure. Oh, dang! Try again. Xander delivers a walleye right where I got a hit 15, 20 minutes ago. Well done. Thank you. Well done. He's got his bonkin stick. It's an eater? Yeah. A little small, but it'll be good. So Xander's uh, cleaning up his catch. I'm making him eat it. Um, he insisted that I take some, but it's a small fish. And I would just rather he have it. I have a sausage that I should eat up tonight anyway. I'm not starving, so I'm insisting that he takes it. And yeah, we're just going to cook up dinner and get to bed early. We're gonna wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow to uh, try and beat the wind. Because tomorrow we have perhaps the most daunting lake of all, Churchill Lake. It's very long. Did you sneak a bite? Yeah, man. Please. No, no, did you? Oh, yeah. No, no, I couldn't. Why? I couldn't. It's not right. <laughs> what? It's not right. You know that I'm, when you catch a fish and I don't catch a fish, I'm not gonna be like, <laughs> I might have some. Unless you're like needing it. I don't know what the game is. I don't know. I'm enjoying it vicariously. Mm. Yeah, that's right. 
Xander is making tea with his mac and cheese water. Not a picky man. Reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> so it's almost 8 o'clock. We're going to hit the hay and wake up really early at 4 a.m. Have breakfast and then hit the water and try and put a real dent into Churchill Lake. It's kind of giving it both of us a bit, bit of concern. So we're going to try and knock it off in the dark. Here we go. Well, I'm glad we woke up early. Uh, the stars are incredible, and there's actually some faint northern lights. Thought it looked kind of bright on the horizon. Awesome. Kind of an awesome morning here. You can see a bit of uh, sunrise glow now, replacing the northern lights glow. Got fire, big bucket of curry, and it's, it's quite calm, so hopefully we can take advantage of that before it picks up. Great star is still out though, won't come up on this camera, but yeah, just an awesome experience. Paddling at first light, it's quite chilly, but reasonably bundled up, and it feels good just to be moving and getting the blood flowing. To say this trip has been magical so far is an understatement. Woodland caribou, stars, northern lights, storms, fishing, uh, northern scenery. Hard to believe it's only day five. Just look at that. Magic. Xander just got a walleye here, and there's a sun dog forming there. Just non stop beauty. Coming to the portage into Churchill Lake. It's a good trail, just a quarter kilometer. Except for this big blowdown, but it lifted up its mat, and you can just walk right behind that. Massive. We're into the north arm of Churchill Lake. There is a breeze in our face, but just a breeze. So we should be good for at least a few hours, I hope. We're probably gonna more or less skip lunch, just snack, and uh, try and put a really good dent in this lake. Yeah, it's another pike. See if you can flip off here. There he goes. That's not a bad one. Oh yeah! That is chunky. Really thick pike. This is a hefty pike and he took the pike deep, the lure deep. So I need the jaw spreaders on this one. Slip them in there when he opens his mouth, like so. Ah. I'm gonna have to get them in a bit more. There we go, okay. Give me one sec please, buddy. Don't thrash, don't thrash, don't thrash. Okay. So, 
sometimes if the if the pike is hooked in the gills or for far back anyway better to let the lure come through rather than trying to yank the hook through the gills and then I just cut the line okay so this guy is free now I'll get a shot wow this is a really thick pike like not that long but very hefty Oh yeah, that's close to a 10 pounder there, yes, a beauty, and oh, I'll let her resuscitate, these big pike, are, they're, they're the girls, let her resuscitate there, get her strength back, make sure she's good to go, could keep a fish this big, it's not like absolutely unreasonable, but especially in a place like this, but I would prefer if she goes to spawn. There, excellent, excellent. Awesome. Churchill, baby! Yeah? Big lake, big fish. Nice. Got that one on the husky jerk. I've been trolling this most of the time just because A, I like it a lot, and B, it doesn't run too, too deep, and we've been running into a lot of shallow areas, some weedy areas, so uh, just, the more allure dives, the more I'm gonna get snagged and lose progress. Just gotta retie now. No oh, walleye? Wow. Immediately after. What fishing on Churchill Lake? Hey, bear, bear. Wow, what a model. Oh man. Oh, I'm just I'm loving this route so much. Having such an, an amazing experience. Yesterday, Woodland Caribou, and then Xander gets a big pike. Today, bear and I get a big pike. Incredible. And northern lights in between. Like, what a trip. Fish on for the Zan man. No bigger than a minnow. No bigger than a minnow, he says. So self-deprecating. Over here. <laughs> A really good thing we started early this morning. It's only 10. The wind's already starting to get tough and we're not even on the main body of Churchill Lake yet. Still in the North Arm. The North Arm itself is bigger than most lakes but at least we're still making progress. A sheltered little bay here we're trying to take breaks every kilometer or two and we're fighting through it uh, tomorrow I check the Zolio our sat, my satcom device and the weather is supposed to be windier tomorrow more of a headwind tomorrow so if we were to stop we'd probably just be teeing ourselves up for a bigger challenge tomorrow so yeah we're uh, clawing our way through making progress Another bear. Just saw another black bear here from afar. Didn't really get a good shot of it. Came in just to see if it was still around, but it looks like it's buzzed off. Just after four, so we've been paddling for 10 hours and we've been up and at it for 12. Pretty much non-stop. We haven't stopped for a proper meal, so I'm really craving dinner. Hoping we can get a fish in these last few kilometers before camp. Whatever the case is, I'll be happy to stop and eat and probably go to bed really early. Some weight on this fish. Oh, oh, you see that? Big jump from the pike 
it's a nice eater for both of us. So that's perfect. Yes. We're eating tonight, my friends. Eating tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just in time, right as we're getting to where we hope to set up, if we can find something. This guy gorped it too. Yeah, he's a uh, gill hook, so a good one to take. Yeah. Oh. He's bleeding a lot already, so I'm just gonna I'll film him on shore. How is it? Good. Good temp pad for you? Good enough. Fantastic. Oh, it all worked out well. Just caught this pike as we we're coming into camp. Probably five pounds, maybe six at the most. Xander's starting the fire up there, which is awesome. So nice to have two people for, for doing this. So three big fillets. And uh, this one had roe in it as well. I've never eaten pike roe before and uh, pike don't spawn till spring, so this is months before that, so it would be very early row, but anyway, it was in there, so we're gonna try it, see if we can make use of it. And all this meat here is just in the Y bones, unfortunately. Full of bones. You can see my knife doesn't even go through it because it's just full of bones. You're getting the big row. Oh yeah. All right. Season in hand. Fish in the pan. Fish in hand. Fish in the pan. <laughs> oh, look at that go, eh? Shriveled up like a, you know what, in cold water. <laughs> what a day! What a day. Two bears, big pike, fish fry. The sun dogs. Golden morning and, uh, and northern lights. Wow. How we doing here, folks? Can I get anyone to refill? Oh, look at that. Oh. These look well done. Mine look a little bit haggard. I'm going to be nice and breaded on one side, and then the other side is just going to... You did it right. You did it a good, good way. You good? You did a good job. So I've eaten fish roe before, but never from pike. We're going to try it. Whoa. Yours is <laughs> still raw and wriggling. Mine is shriveled up, but... I need some work. You're right. It's not bad though. That was... It's fishy. It's good though. Mmm. No, it is good. Yeah, it's really good. Good that. Pass the lemon, please. Thank you. Mmm. Man, that's good. That was so good. Hit the spot. Just what we needed. Yeah, needed is right. Whew. Alright, we're uh, getting saddled up for the night, both zonked, as soon as we lie down we'll probably be dead to the world. Sandra's back there on a nice mossy spot, a little, a little bit undulating but otherwise a nice spot. Looking forward to getting in the drama again. Been wonderful as always and I uh, just love not having to find flat or dry ground. Help me. Another absolutely astonishing day. Five days in, and I'd say this is on pace to be the best camping trip of my life. I'm absolutely inspired by what we've seen here. It's hard to put into words. Sun's setting, moon is rising just through there. Who knows if we'll see the northern lights, at least stars. Yeah, just overwhelmed right now with uh, emotion and joy, gratitude, having the best trip ever. You peep it on me? Oh yeah, and I like what I'm seeing. <laughs> uh, so, check the Zolio again. Yeah. 
It's now calling for 70 millimeters tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So let's find ourselves a nice place to bunker in. Yeah. Possibly. Hopefully. Yeah. We can actually like get somewhere today. This wind sounds pretty bad. Yeah. I think we'll be all right to get to the next lake. Yeah. I mean, if not, we're just screwed, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll be all right. What are you making? Fire. <laughs> oats, I presume? Yeah, oats. Yeah. Bacon. Oh, I think I almost just lost my eyebrows. <laughs> Up at quarter to five this morning, again trying to beat the winds, but they're already blowing. They blew all night pretty hard, but they're going to get really bad this afternoon, so we'll uh, hopefully get in some distance and find a really good camp for the next day, which is supposed to have 70 millimeters of rain, which is, um, like, that's just absolutely huge. That's a huge rainstorm. So we really want to hunker down and find a good site for tonight. on through some narrows. Always a good spot, narrows. Oh, got a bit of feistiness. One hand around the base of the tail. If they're supporting the belly. Little pike. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Good one, eh? Nice little walleye. On to St. Raphael Lake. getting pretty bad. It's getting really bad. This is gonna be our biggest grind yet, I'd say. Wind's getting pretty bad, so there's some campsites, maybe a kilometer or two, and we're gonna take them if they're any good. I'm just doing mac and cheese for lunch, something quick. I was so low energy, I didn't really care. Xander's got a beautiful pasta going. Got dehydrated veggies of all kinds in there. Nice noodles. And Alfredo? Yeah, but don't forget yeah. the main ingredient. Chicken? Love. Love. <laughs> Popcorn for dessert. And we are blowing the lid off this thing. got into my drummer and immediately I could tell something wasn't right. The pod just wasn't holding air and then I heard the hissing. And as far as punctures on an air mat go, this is a very easy one. I could easily identify it here. It's a tiny little like probably five millimeter long puncture, which probably happened on one of these trees as I was backing it up to slide it into the hammock. But yeah, this is a very easy one. I can just use the textile glue that 
you'll, most air mats will come with a little repair kit, that's all this is. And Amok supplies some material as well for larger punctures, but uh, for a small one like this, just the textile glue will do just fine. Apply one coat, let that dry, and 10 minutes, apply another one, and another 10 minutes after that, a third coat, and then we'll be good to go. Be it. Oh, it's good. Just studying the weather. <laughs> I actually I punctured, punctured my pad. Oh no! But I'm, it's for repairing now. Is it okay? I have I, I have repair tape. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Textile glue going. I got in the hammock, and then I was like, something immediately didn't feel right. Oh no! And then I could hear. I was like, no, it's all good. I like I, where you're chilling. <laughs> <laughs> it's very comfy. <laughs> Just in the moss. <laughs> How you doing over there? Good, just finished. Yeah, seems pretty. I think it'll be pretty good. You got the tarp up? Yeah, I looked at the weather and it looks like the wind will die down for the rain. Yep. So it's mostly a vertical setup. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Xander's just admiring the mushrooms. There are an incredible number on this island, really all over on this trip, but this island has a ton. I was just studying the weather again. Check the Zolio, which has been invaluable on this trip as always getting the weather, especially with the conditions that we've had, which have been pretty good, better than expected, but uh, difficult at times. And I'll show you here on my screen. So we are expecting tomorrow 78 millimeters of rain. That's the biggest rain forecast I've ever seen. The hourly totals are 4.5, 5.3, big totals. But then look at the north wind. We've been waiting for this. North wind, sustained north wind. So that's going to massively help our progress. Uh, we're definitely going to paddle in the rain to take advantage of that. I'll give you a quick tour of our island. That's facing north, east, and south. We're all the way around here. Back in there. Big fire pit here. Sanders charging. Shoes drying. And Xander's back in here with his tent and he's got a nice setup with the tarp too, so he has a, an awning. Very nice actually. Reading this book, Erin read it at home and she said I might like it. And it's pretty funny. It's two guys about Xander and my age, and they are doing a canoe trip from Pickle Lake area, which is roughly where we are. And they run into a forest fire and get into all kinds of trouble. Hopefully, we're not getting into any trouble. Six days into camping with Xander, who is virtually a stranger to me. And yeah, I'm thrilled that he's here. It's worked out beautifully. Solo tripping is awesome because you can eat whenever you want, you stop for camp whenever you want, fish. It's all on your schedule. And you make some compromises when you trip with someone, but like the special special moments, like the caribou, seeing that, like I'm, I'm so glad that he was here to enjoy that moment. And then the tough moments too, battling a headwind. It's just a lot, you feel like you're in it together. Um, so yeah, I'm thrilled he's here. Just went over to the food barrel and got some chocolate and some scotch. Ah, yeah. That's good reading. Oh, yeah, the sun has that like kind of uh, smoke in the atmosphere. Kind of yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. I'm doing non calzones tonight. Xander is rehydrating some uh, lasagna. Sounds great. This is an Italian inspired evening. Mwah. Mwah.
Do you know any, any Italian words? That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> Parmigiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. Sun just set, moon's on the rise. Red sunset, red moon rise, storm coming. Ambiance off the charts. It's 8.30, we're settled into our beds and we're awaiting the storm, which will be, if the forecast comes to fruition, it's calling for 84 millimeters of rain right now, the latest forecast. It'll be the biggest storm that I've ever, rainstorm I've ever seen in one day that I can recall anyway. And I check the weather obsessively at home and on camping trips. So it looks like it's gonna be a doozy, a wet day. So it's gonna be interesting. So the rain has lit up uh, mostly right now. It's just raining lightly. Made it through the night. What was your experience? Oh, it was awesome waking up around. Oh, I went to sleep listening to Lord of the Rings <laughs> <laughs> and had my headphones and on audiobooks. And just woke up around midnight to some thunder and seen flashes of light. And the tarp was going crazy. The wind was howling, and I was thinking. Oh crap, <laughs> like this is gonna be bigger than we thought. There's definitely that moment of yeah. like feeling like you're in the teeth of an animal and, and it could just rip you to shreds. It was but, pretty intimidating to be honest. Yeah, um, but the, the beast was gentle enough with us. And I was tired enough to go back to sleep. I got up, like watched it for a little bit, saw the thunder and and figured like there's nothing I could do at this point. Yeah. And so it's like we did all we could. And so I dozed back off, woke up a few times to the rain, which was pounding. Yeah, got up around six and see, things seemed to be like puzzling out, so. Yeah, so much for our sleep in day. We're, our, our sleep cycle's just set and we can't even sleep in. <laughs> yeah, you got up too? Yeah. Got my coffee already. Nice. Ready. And we're just waiting for a north wind. Yeah. Waiting for that wind to shift in our favor. Day seven, I'm dipping into the fuel canister for the first time. I'm gonna have cold oats in some powdered milk, which I have in this old uh, dry peanut butter container. And then I have some dry fruit as well, some mixed berries in there, and then banana and apple slices in here. Uh, on the burner, I'll just make some tea. We do almost all of our own dehydrating. Here are those banana and apple slices. And it's an awesome way to use food that is maybe going to go bad before you use it up. You can eat them like chips too. And they're quite good. Tastes like candy, but completely natural. But yeah, a good way to save food that's going to go bad. And while I let that steep, I'll eat my brekkie. Which I've already had a couple bites of. It's delicious. Xander just popped by and we had a chat about the plan for today. We're just gonna pack up and get going. We're gonna get soaked today for sure. So we might as well just stop delaying the inevitable and set up camp earlier in the day and have time to kind of get situated and dry out a bit, hopefully. It's supposed to rain all day. We won't be drying out in the sun or anything, but at least under our tarps, we can get everything ready for, for the night, which is gonna be fairly chilly. So we camped there last night. And we're heading down this lake onto the next map, down here across into Ghost Lake, and then we're gonna hopefully camp somewhere there before the next portage. Whoa. That's a big walleye. Nice. Whoa! 
Oh, he doesn't want to get in the basket. He's like, that's not for me. All right. Oh, well. That's a, that's a big walleye. Biggest of the trip, maybe? Biggest one for the trip, yeah. Nice fish. That's a good fish. Bloop. Shoop. Later, bud. Thank you for uh, your visit and all your slime. into some islands hoping we can find a good campsite we're gonna call it for the day it's uh it's very chilly uh, especially for xander without the dry suit so best to just stop for the day we can put in more time tomorrow when the rain's supposed to pass made a good little chunk of distance today so we're stopping here on this beautiful spot uh, it's a little messed up back there so much blow down but Xander's going to get his tent and tarp up here. I'm sure I can get the uh, hammock up somewhere. We're not too picky right now. Uh, this north wind is pretty chilly. Got the tarp up. I'm going to have lunch right away. I'm hungry and uh, despite the dry suit, it's pretty chilly. Chicken and dumplings. Sent to me by Burn. Thanks so, so much, Burn. Really appreciate this today. I'm doing this because it's uh, low fuel consumption. Just boil a little water, which I use this aluminum pot for. This one is steel. I do most of my cooking in this, but this one's great for boiling water because aluminum conducts the heat a lot better, so I'll use less fuel. Um, this, I brought it maybe half full and I've only used it this morning for tea I believe but I still want to conserve it in case we get into some really rough weather in the back half of the trip. We still have a fair ways left. Water is boiled and this looks phenomenal. Very different. Dumplings sound really good right now. Oh, that smells so good. There's nothing like getting under a tarp on a cold, rainy day, making a hot meal. We were saying this on the way down as we were paddling through the rain, which is, there's, there may be no greater simple pleasure in life. That's comfort food right now. Huh. Mm. Yes. Mmm. Those dumplings are good. Oh, that's so good. days ago we found a huge supply of birch bark so we stashed some in bags we've been making use of it here and there we think it's everywhere but surprisingly some sites are it's quite scarce 
And on wet conditions like these, wet days like these, it makes it so much easier. Let's get these cut logs on the outside of the fire so they can start drying. Shot through the high and you're too late. You're giving love a bad name. Another beauty campsite amongst this little island chain. And this should be our most favorable day for travel so far, which is very exciting. It's been headwinds and or rain most of the time so far. And we've enjoyed it thoroughly, but like the thought of, of getting good conditions, wind blowing on our backs without rain pelting our faces is uh, very exciting. What do you got? Pike. <laughs> Sandra's got a fish on. And when we have two lines in the water, a good approach is for one of us to troll shallow, one deep, and kind of establish what the fish are in the mood for. So he just got that one deep, trolling a 20 foot crankbait. And that's a small sample size, but if it happens again, then I'll probably switch to a deeper crank. So my cell phone went on the fritz last night. I don't know if we got a little wet. I was being careful, but anyway, um, it might be kaput. It's not working right now in any case, which is a tr struggle because out here, I use that to check weather via the Zolio satcom device and check in with Aaron. I use it for various other things like an alarm clock, but I also use it as my GPS with offline topo maps. And that's why I always bring printed maps. Sanders got his third fish of the morning on that 20 foot crankbait, so. Oh, battle scar, this guy, look at that. He got in a fight with something. See that? Scrapes on him. And, and he got uh, that nicer walleye yesterday on the deeper crankbait too, so. That's uh, evidence enough for me. I'm gonna switch it up. Probably go with this deep perch pattern. Huh? There's a mink running along the shore. A little pike. Flip them off here at the side. There we go, it's perfect. Get them up? Yep. Yeah, they're hitting these deep crankbaits today. Another one on just a minute later. Feels pretty small. And it's a walleye. But we're not keeping right now, maybe after the portage. So I will just flip this one off. Thank you, buddy. Wally, decent one. I'm not bad, I guess. Okay. Quick show. That's my best walleye of the trip. Thanks, buddy. Okay, that's a good guy. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh my God, the hook came out. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was huge. That was probably bigger than your last biggest one, right? Maybe. The hook came out and then he was just laying there and I scoop him, but he wouldn't fit in the net. That dang net. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh man. Good effort. Coming up to our portage, 325 meters into Hooker Lake, I believe it is. No, Vincent. Then Hooker, then Yam.
Headed to Hooker Lake and just having a quick lunch here on a small beach. The salami and cheese wraps to get us going quickly. Am I holding it? Thank you, Vanna. <laughs> it's after five now and we're looking for a campsite. The wind just died and this is probably the calmest we've had, calmest conditions of the whole trip. Xander's using the jaws of life. Jaw spreaders. Oh yeah, the hook's like through his gills. Yeah. Is it were they mangled? Oh, these long fires. Sure. How's it look? It looks like home. Oh. Oh. Just made camp. We just got to camp. My first priority is usually dry shoes. Mine is fish. Sanders got a pike to clean up. Took the hook badly so it was a keeper. That was surgery to get it out. Yeah. Ooh. What are you sliming my canoe for? Sorry. No. <laughs> Xander, eating fish. Hello? Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, so nice doing fish fries with two people. Yeah, Get the cool. fire going, you know. It take three times longer to do it alone, somehow. Yeah, what time did we get here? Because we are, fire's up, fish is ready, and we're eating. Like, what, was that 20 minutes? That was like a time trial. Yeah, that, that was, was amazing. record time. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. Well, we had just enough time to cook up that pike and a little, little side. I made instant potatoes. Xander, you in the lasagna? What is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming that's lasagna. <laughs> Xander's got his tent up and I uh, will be Right beside my bud, here. We've never been closer. Do you mind going back in the forest a little bit? Full moon rising. We're finally set up here. Xander is in his tent. Hey, hey, keep it down. And at the start of this trip, I mentioned personal space. Well, by uh, the nature of this site, we are about four feet apart. If he farts, I will probably smell it. So uh, it's gonna be a long one. And this is the chilliest night of the trip, but I think I'll persevere. Shut up. We're up at 5.30 in the light of the moon, full moon. Shone all night. It was actually uh, a little too bright for sleeping, but anyway, we were both pretty zonked, so we slept fine. And stars are still out. And it's our chilliest morning yet, four degrees. And we're heading for Lawson Lake, which is one of the lakes we're most excited for. Brad Jennings, whose map we're using for this trip, he said it was probably his favorite of the trip, so. Pretty excited. Shout out to Brad. Shout out to Brad. And Wayne. And Wayne. Noticed something hanging back here last night. It's a trap for a, it doesn't look like it's big enough for beaver. So I don't know, mink, weasel. Things like that. It's on a nail which is growing into the tree, so I guess it's trapped there forever. Mm -hmm. 
on the water at sunrise. Glassy conditions. Misty. Chilly. Loving it. Another great campsite, camp number eight. On to camp nine. So yesterday we came way down here. This map's in sections, unfortunately. I can't show you the overview. Camp there at the mouth of this big long bay. And then we go up this huge U with no portages up Lawson Lake. Yesterday's portage is our last portage for probably, it's gotta be like 30 or 40 kilometers. Pretty fantastic. Oh -ho. We're approaching a point and points have been really good fishing for us on this trip, which is no surprise. Points are always good structure, any time of year, any lake. But we end up in these unspoken races to the points to see who gets to troll past it first. Xander's ahead of me now, so he's gonna get the whopper, but it's okay, I'll beat him to the next one. Well, like most fishing places that we build up in our minds, um, I snagged and Xander caught a weed, so that's that. Xander's trying to paddle up this little rapid, swift, and we don't see a trail, so we're hoping that's the plan here, that's the play. This last spot's gonna be tough. Treadmill. Treadmill on max speed. Oh. Oh. It's just on the edge. Oh. We're at the bottom of the loop into Lawson Lake, and it's a long, skinny one. It's, it feels like a river, but it's a lake, which is pretty much my favorite paddling. You can see both shores all the time. Fishing's usually good. You can see wildlife on the shores too. And there are pictographs here. I'm looking forward to it. Last summer, Aaron and I were on a two week trip in Cuerco, and we couldn't film any of the pictographs there because there was a, an explicit request from the local First Nations community not to do that. And the park echoed that, Cuerco. So we respected that, but here there is no such restriction. So I'll enjoy sharing it this time. Uh, not the biggest pike, but not the smallest either. Oh, thank you. No problem. So considerate. That huge rainfall two days ago, maybe three, I can't remember now. It's created all these ephemeral streams and waterfalls. Beautiful, breaking up our paddle. Just hear them at the side of the shore. And pretend to check them out, that was so nice. What do we have? Walleye? Yep. Yeah, nice one. Should we have this for lunch? Yeah. It's like, it would feed too. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, my thanks to this fish, which is gonna be our lunch. Really quite a nice walleye. I'll show you after I dispatch him. Just out of respect for this guy. Thank you. I like to hold it in the net, just cause the rubberized net Provides extra grip. And then just crush the skull to ensure that the brain is, is zapped and that uh, fish is out of its misery. 
couple more just to be absolutely sure, but that's definitely dispatched now. Give you a look. John the provider. <laughs> oh. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Nice little walleye. Coming up to these narrows, which has a cliff, and that's the pictograph site. Very excited to get to these. an amazing spot here even without the pictographs it's very scenic and the pictographs just bring you back to a time that's it's hard to imagine now in this day and age and Xander and I were talking about it earlier and I just find it uh, so inspiring that people lived off the land here like it's a harsh existence the winters up here are brutal minus 30s minus 40 and it can be you know tough times up here but they did it. I'm gonna add this pike to the walleye and make it like a full meal for both of us. We don't have to go into the food barrel at all. Thank you. That's just a reaction after being dispatched. They sometimes twitch. Thank you. Thank you. And then sometimes to get uh, cleaner fillets without blood, I'll cut the gills and they'll just pump out some blood after uh, after it's been dispatched. This heart keeps pumping for a short while. It'll pump some of that blood out. You can see it running down the side of the fish there. And that one actually took it in the gills a little bit. Not badly, but it makes it a better keeper since it has a lower chance of survival uh, if released. And now we've got a feast. So we've got two fish, one walleye, one pike. Gonna be really good eating. Those are some big fish. Those are a lot bigger than I expected. Not bad. Yeah. That walleye is a big boy. Yeah. There's a better look at that blue, blue tinge. I just played the walleye. Sandra's gonna do up the pike. Have quite a feast. Some cheek meat, meat. Also got the egg sacks. We'll eat those and the wings. What's this? Is that sperm? Uh, I think that's like it's liver or something. <laughs> Stop asking if everything's sperm. Is sperm? Can we eat it? Had a really nice shore lunch on that island. We're feeling great, energized. And we're looking for a great campsite tonight. We got a tailwind, like today has been the best day in terms of all, all things considered. Fishing's been great. Just need a good campsite to cap it off. Pull into the camp about two hours earlier than yesterday. Looks like a beauty. Setting up my hammock in a really nice spot here. Terrific view down Lawson Lake. And there is a big widow maker hanging right over. A great tent pad and a great place for me to set up the hammock as well. So I'm just taking it down for safety. Timber! Got a fantastic setup here for the drummer. Slept so comfortably in it this trip. And I pitched the tarp really high on this end, as high as I could, to have a northern view. Is in a spectacular view here from the hammock. Moon, stars, if I'm lucky, aurora, if the moon goes down. There'll be lots to watch tonight on a clear night. So that's me there. 
There is tons of blowdown here. There has been on most of the sites, but this one probably more than any other. Xander's over here with a really terrific view. And he's got us a fire going too. Ah! Are you okay? Mm. Did you pinch your finger or something? Oh no. You burnt it? It's a hot rock. Dude. Oh, oh that's gonna burst her. Oh damn, man. Look at that. Like instantly. Mm, yeah, keep it in there for, yeah. for a while. Ooh, that was a that was a shock. I thought it was on the outside, but evidently I am wrong. Ooh, that's starting to hurt. If it makes you feel any better I got it on camera. Did you? Yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh. Oh boy. Shoot. That looks bad. Amputation might be in order. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh god. Yeah, just leave it in there for a little bit. That sucks, man. I'm sorry that happened. Oh, it's all good. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. You almost got got earlier in this trip. I almost get got every single time I come out. <laughs> Getting a pot of spruce tea going again. And I just made a boo-boo. I picked up a rock out of the fire. I thought it was on the outside, but um, it instantly scorched my fingertips. Hopefully it's all right. Just hope it doesn't like blister and get really uncomfortable for paddling, but it's, it is what it is at this point. It's done. And we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Xander got some footage of it. I happened to be recording the fire as I committed my act of idiocy. Got rotini with rehydrated sauce, vegetables, parmesan, and some balderson in there. You yeah. Big pack of wolves close to us just across the lake. So awesome. That was so cool. That was amazing. That was so cool. Wow, that was so loud. I know. Wow. Woodland caribou, two bears, and now a pack of wolves howling just across the lake. What an incredible place. All sweet dreams. That's a fire. So how about those wolves? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> that was amazing. I was like just about to put, yeah, about to doze off. And... That was incredible. I wish we could see them. It, it was a uh, interesting, it wasn't like big howls. It sounded like wolves chattering at a party. Oh man. You know? They just started whining like very loudly immediately. And it kind of tapered off. Any theories? A kill? I think it's a kill. I think it's a kill. Yeah. But it happened so close to sunset that like maybe it was just the sun going down. Also sure. pretty epic. Well, yeah, sun was going down and the full moon. Oh, that's so cool. That was cool. That was such an experience because considering we thought that you know nothing really happened yesterday. Yeah, it was pretty uneventful. And I journaled that, and then <laughs> boom. On to day ten of camping with someone I barely knew. And it's still going fantastic. Really enjoying Xander's company, and I'm I'm a loner. Like I make very little social effort. Um, I really stick to my myself and home with Aaron, homebody, I guess. And I need a lot of alone time. So the fact that I'm still doing great with Xander out here is uh, a testament to what a good guy he is. And we're excited for today. Wolves were our camp is right behind us there, and the wolves. We're just over on this on this shore somewhere here it sounded like. 
Not far at all. That was magical. And my burnt fingers are doing surprisingly well. They look like, I don't know, pruney, as if I've been swimming or something, but I guess getting them in the cold water right away and holding them there for a while uh, maybe it prevented blisters, I hope so. Blisters would just be a nuisance on like my main, my dominant hand out here, but so far so good, locked out. Short portage into the next lake, which doesn't appear to have a name. Tamarack are starting to turn golden. So we're on to the 1.6 kilometer, one mile portage with lots of blowdown apparently. Good day. Good day. It's a good thing this tree is well flagged. You would hardly see anything here, eh? Yeah. Cooking up some burritos quickly on the burner here in preparation for this mile long portage. Gotta fuel up, feed the machine. Pretty good so far muddy, but that's, that's to be expected. No blowdown that we haven't been able to get around yet. Still a great trail. A little bit of blowdown, but nothing you can't step over. Some old wolf scat here. Oh, I wish we had laid eyes on them. They were so close last night. <laughs> There's a really cool tiered mushroom on the trail ahead oh, yeah. and some interesting poop. Ooh. I'll leave you with that teaser. Here's Xander's second load. We always break the portages up into two loads, double carry. It's way too much for one. With uh, We're not ultralight packers. These aren't ultralight canoes. And with fishing and filming gear, it's just not possible. Beautiful end to the portage here. I am through, took the canoe and food barrel in one shot. My main pack's halfway there back, so almost there. Moose over there. just saw a moose as we were coming through this marsh, which was no surprise really, like it seemed like a really moosey spot, but that is now four out of five big mammals that we could have seen on this trip, including the wolves uh, that we heard last night, the two bears and the caribou. That is absolutely incredible, like what exceeds our wildest expectations. And now the only one left is a lynx, but that's probably the least likely. Amazing. So we're back to Dillisap Lake on the south end. We passed through the north end near the start of the trip. So we're getting toward the end. We think we'll be two more days, uh, but we have a long paddle a lot back. We're trying to take advantage of this tailwind we have today because tomorrow's gonna be a headwind and this is, we have a lot of north ground to cover here on this lake. This tailwind is gaining fetch, powering us across the lake. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's an otter. Not the first otter we've seen on this trip, but the first one we got any footage of. Not to mention the eagles, and hawks, and mink. What a wildlife paradise. It's a wildlife sanctuary. And this animal. <laughs> yeah, the biggest animal in the park. <laughs> the biggest and the dumbest. <laughs>
Home sweet home, eh? Pretty cool spot here after a long day, a biggest day. I've been awake since 3.30. I just woke up and couldn't sleep after that. Oh, <laughs> someone's changing. <laughs> and it's a little bushy, but uh, find a tent pad for Xander. And the hammock always has a, a home somewhere, as long as there are trees. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to hang up in it. Just about to lose the sun. Just enough time to set up. It's appreciated. We'll cook after sunset and then go to sleep. What a long day. Good day. Full. Are you peeping on my tent? Yes. I'm in the hammock, sleeping without the tarp tonight. Another awesome day. I am totally pooched. I've uh, been up awake since 3.30, out of bed since five, on the water and portaging, I don't know, 12 hours today. And uh, feeling it, but have that like really nice level of exhaustion. It's blissful to think about going to sleep. So it's a good, it's a good tired. And we're looking forward to our, our last full day tomorrow. Added a moose today, more beautiful lakes and scenery. Really couldn't ask for more on this trip. Sander's gone. I'm so scared. Morning of day 11. We are on our way at 6.15 a.m. Up at five, one of our earliest times on the water. And we're looking forward to our last day. Last full day. Sanders having a very bad time. Speak for yourself. He has explosive diarrhea, and he's defiled all of his undies. Not a clean one to spare. And I wouldn't give him any toilet paper. I said, not a square to spare. And he said, I didn't watch Seinfeld. Just kidding. No diarrhea. A little something on here. Doesn't feel like too much. Pike number one million. Pike. Just let him go without handling. Okay, here we go. Okay. Thank you. Just did a small portage, our second last portage of the trip into the small lake, which we're just gonna enjoy and fish for, for quite a while. We have uh, ample time today to get back to our access lake, and then we'll be out tomorrow morning. So we're just enjoying it, soaking it up, the end of the trip. Bull moose back there. Grunting in the rut. Fantastic, such a cooperative subject. Beautiful the way he was grunting at us and he was racked up and we, uh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, that was awesome. Beautiful outro for our journey. Almost, it's not over yet. Who knows what else we'll see, but that was perfect. That's perfect. Chocolate?
Uh, yeah, celebratory square. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Two squares, wow. A wealthy man. Mm -hmm. We ran into an outfitter in the area who was guiding a couple of guys for uh, the moose hunt. The season's already open up here in the north. And uh, he said that they're, they're already in the rut, which seems early. It's uh, late September, but he would know. And yeah, that, that moose seemed like he was looking for a dance partner. They call this the boreal forest, but to me sometimes it feels more like a jungle. It's so wild. It is. This trip has been like a safari. <laughs> See that one? Yeah. Few days into fall now. It's a it's a chilly one with a cold north wind. Warm it up with some fire and cook up a pot of tea. On the 700 meter portage back to Minchin Lake or Access Lake. It's it's always weird on these trips. Like they feel like they fly by, but that feels like a long time ago that we were here at the same time. Well, I've never seen a flock of them before. Sandhill cranes. We're just pulling into our final camp for the trip. Some very menacing clouds above us. And we're excited to just set up the tarp, ride out anything that comes, and soak up these last moments. As a loner, it can be hard to muster up the social energy to, to get out there, to make friends, to do anything social. Even online, it can take a lot of effort, but sometimes you, you put yourself out there and it, and it pays off. Found a great friend in Xander, enjoyed his company so much on this trip, it wouldn't have been the same without him. And we had a phenomenal time, um, you know. You're never sure if you know someone, I, all I did is watch his YouTube you have a, probably a good sense of who someone is through that, but you never know. It could be, it's a, it's a bit of a wild card. And this was probably my most anticipated route of the year. And uh, it would have, <laughs> it could have been ruined if I picked the wrong person, but I didn't. Uh, Xander's a stand up guy, so worked out beautifully. I started out backcountry camping as a soloist because I didn't think I had compatible tripping partners, like who had the right gear and schedule and uh, perhaps skill level but largely I, I went solo because I, I just wanted to be alone but uh, you know with Aaron coming into my life a couple of years ago and uh, getting out with people like Joe and Xander and and learning how much richer a trip can be with people I still love solo but um, there's something to be said for for company out here there's that Chris McCandless quote, happiness only real when shared. And it's, uh, it's so true. And I'm, I'm so grateful to, to all those people and to you for letting me share this happiness. The site is an absolute rat's nest, blow down everywhere. And we're cleaning it up, burning up the junk. And this one's really just for us. Tree top, dead teak tree top, full of seeded out cones. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's hot. <laughs> Bless you. Gooseraba. Gooseraba. Oh, night's 11. Mm. 
What an incredible trip. Yeah. One of the best of my life. Yeah? Yeah, easily. Easy, easily for me, too. For experience. Like, it's a fantastic route on its own. You got lakes, rivers, a bit of white water, some, like, wetlands, and incredible wildlife. Best. Right on cue, the loon. I just, like, I'm blown away by the boreal forest. It was... When you invited me, I was like, oh yeah, Boreal Forest, that sounds really boring and flat. <laughs> and it was relatively flat, but it was beyond mm. gorgeous. The wildlife and the fauna and flora and the mushrooms, <laughs> the fish. Um, Great fishing. It was so full of life. Yeah. It was such a magical place. It is, for like a short period of the year, so full of life. And then in the winter, in the winter, it's just... Uh, Almost a wasteland, but still in a beautiful way with, with life. Wow. Just right on cue. Seriously. Hey, buddy. Loon flies by. Ah. And, uh, yeah, obviously the caribou. The, yeah, the caribou. That was magic. Like, that's, for me, an unforgettable part of my life. Yeah, and not to mention northern lights. Like, everything in oh, the yeah. sky has been incredible. The weather, the, the moon... It's been so bright, yeah. too bright really. Yeah. Um, amazing sunrises and sunsets, the stars, yeah. and yeah, the, the northern weather, lights. The winds on our side against us. Yep, the winds. The fishing. Uh, just an immersive wilderness experience. Just feel like we got everything. <clears throat> what was your uh, What was your highlight? Was it the caribou? Or was it that, that storm? Yeah, pike in the weather, mm. for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, catching you, some fish, catching some mm. walleye. Pulling some of those things out of the out of the lake, <laughs> learning about fishing from you, um, going barbless was really mm. really cool. Kudos, man. Yes, yeah. I, I didn't so say anything fishing. to him. That was completely his decision, yeah. and it's a good one. Like uh, when you're catching this many fish too, it just makes the release process so much easier, and more enjoyable. Yeah, it makes you a better fisherman too when you're trying to reel them in and it's barbless. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And man, we had a lot of fish fries. Like. Most fish I've ever eaten on a trip, for sure. You, how many times? <laughs> Six at least. There's some heavy breathing Seven. at night. Some oh, days. yeah, like <sighs> a lot of fried fish in our arteries <laughs> and campfire smoke in our lungs. Yeah, the caribou was super cool. Yeah. So, sorry, was that your highlight? Mm. Or just I the mean, fishing that's in like general? the most magical thing that happened. If there was anything that like bordered on like yeah. the magical, mystical, mm -hmm. it was that moment yeah. when the caribou came out. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And your low point of the trip? Um, sitting on this bench, <laughs> hearing your and feeling your farts. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good choice. A bit of recency bias in there, I think. Um, but yeah, okay. It's traumatizing. <laughs> Low point. Um, yeah, it's this moment. <laughs> yeah. So we're paddling out tomorrow, and uh, in the morning, and making the long drive home. Bittersweet. Eight hours for us, and then another 12 for me. Yeah, Ooh. he's driving back to Toronto from my place. I'm a good guy. John's Hi. giving me a trip on the way home, so I'm going to hit that one up. <laughs> and uh, if you want to see that trip, if you want to see Xander's version of this trip, which will be a lot different from mine, he has a very different style. He's very punchy, fast-paced. Um, his video will be a lot shorter than mine. You might look back on mine thinking, oh, how slow and boring. I love his channel, so check it out. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did, as we did. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Have a great day. <laughs> Don't ever sign off on my show again. <laughs>
A little bit of light creeping into the sky. Our bodies are pretty raw. We're almost back. Oh man, it's so bittersweet to end. getting increasingly no, burnt. <laughs> Popcorn? Yeah. No. It's a little burnt. I like barely There's some like good popcorn. pieces. Know, yeah, he barely really likes popcorn. popcorn. It's weird. I think I would describe the progression of, of our friendship on this trip as day good. one, we would have been like, hey, uh, John, I just want to record something on, on uh, the camera. Could you, uh, do you mind just being quiet for a sec? Like, really delicate. And then yesterday it was just, hey, shut up for a second. Hey, yo, shut up. <laughs> yo. Sorry. There's like, you can't help but uh, get comfortable with someone when you spend that much time together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great an having, interesting social experiment. It's amazing having friends. We gotta put in a little distance here. Uh, weather, wind is gonna be a bit of a concern on this trip. Thanks for the pee pee water. <laughs> Thanks for the pee pee water.